So it's been about a month, so it's time for another video for the Regeekin channel. And I'm going to take a little switch up here because one of the things you do know if you're watching a channel or want to follow me on Twitter or Facebook or whatever is that I'm a huge, been a huge uh, Dungeons & Dragons player since junior high. Uh, it, well, God, great, grade school was I was first introduced to it in grade school. Uh, uh, basic edition. And uh, been playing it till now, so 37 years, something like that. So, um, why I'm doing this is that I posted all kinds of stuff. I posted comic books and I've done uh, movie stuff and just geek stuff all together. But one thing I, I do know, and I'm because I'm doing this all, I know DD, and I know. I think I know. I mean, I feel like I know DMing because I've always DM'd. I've always, ever, ever since we started, when my friends decided, I was like, "You, you like to DM?" I'm like, "Yeah, I like." I sort of like to be in the control. I'm more of the creator of the group. I was DMing, so I DM for when I was in junior high. We had our club after school. I DM for them, and uh, I DM through high school. My three different high schools that I went to. I always made friends by playing D&D &D and I always DM'd. Um, and um, I, when I, I seem to surround with people who play D&D, &D, so when I got married, my brother-in-law was, and his friends were all D&D &D players, so they all gravitated towards me and I ran them through stuff. So I know D&D, &D, so I've been playing it a lot. So I sort of have a feel for what it is to be DM and so I thought and I've been seeing a lot of stuff on, on, on Twitter and stuff about people who are like oh I'm a horrible DM or I don't know how to or I'm afraid to and, and stuff you know things like that and, and it, it's like it's it, it takes us it takes a certain person who wants to do it it's like um, who no one ever wants to be the healer in WoW no one wants to be the tank in WoW right you never want to be the person with responsibilities on but that's the most fun. To me, the DM is the most fun. I have a great time just sort of controlling everything. So so, that, so that's what I want to talk about. I want to do like a little, I don't know, like a school or a little thing. I'll just do several episodes on different things that help me create a better world for people or a more immersing and what, what not nothing like the experts and the, the Wizards of the Coast. All This is just my experience over 30 seven years 37 years of dming what i found and what has helped me become a better dm all right so th that's it i mean uh, it's just going to be things that i've and, and if you want to leave comments leave comments it's just for fun like i said i'm not a, i'm not i'm not on critical role i'm not any of those things you know i mean i, I did brand oop, i didn't brand myself here you know i do i do play i played all my whole life so um I just want to get that out there. So th th this, these next series of videos are just going to be on what I think it takes to be a good DM. What helps me? It could not. You could totally disagree with me. Someone would be like, you know, you're totally out of your head. You're speaking out of your ass. You don't know what you're talking about. But this is what I found that helps me. All right. So if you want to watch, watch and stick around and we'll, 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 um, we'll talk about some things. So it'll be short videos. It won't be that long. But, um, um, First I want to talk about is is the simple thing is what is D&D? So what is D&D? What it boils down to, what is D&D? &D? And D&D &D is basically socialization. Okay? That's it. It's a bunch of people getting together, having a good time, socializing. All right? Right now I DM for two groups. Uh, one group is completely 20-somethings. 20 uh, 25, 26, 27s. Okay? And this is no crap. Even myself, we play for four hours, five hours, and not one person's on their phone. Okay? We are talking, we are laughing, we're having a good time. You know, it's my it's my son, it's my daughter, so I'm bonding with them. It's their friends, their um, um, people they know that I've known, I have a relationship with. So I'm sort of passing it on to the younger generation. Like I'm 40, going to turn 49, and they're 26, and I'm we have something in common. We're totally relating for four hours, we're talking. And so that's what D&D &D is. It's a group time to get your people together, your friends. And have a good time 
So that's what that, that's what it boils down to. No matter what happens, no matter who win, who kills who or what, if you don't have a good time, you failed at D and D. That's it. If you have a good time, no matter what happens, you win D and D. Okay, that's it. If you come out of an adventure and you guys are having a good time, and, and your players have had a good time, and you've had a good time as the DM, okay, then you win D and D. That's how you win. That's that's how you win D and D. Okay, you lose at D and D is when it becomes a fight, when you're arguing, when it's not fun, and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And D and D is just that. It's to get people together, to forget your normal life, forget all the headaches you're having on the outside, immerse yourself into a fantasy realm, and have a good time. And for the DM, your job is to guide these people through and to immerse them in your world. You are not against them. They're not against you. You can have fun as a DM and give them crap and stuff like that and make it more challenging but you are just there to guide them through the world and 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 initiate the time that you're supposed to be having and that's where people get scared people get scared because like i don't i don't i don't have that i can't i don't want to be the responsible one i just want to sit there with my character sheet and i want to do a few things the dm you're constantly you're going you're, you're thinking this you're doing this you're reading the book you're you know what are you doing 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 what are you doing, what are you doing? no you can't do that no you can't do that yes you can you can't do that okay look at the book that's what you're doing but it should be fun. If you're not having fun, don't be a DM. Be a player, okay? So uh, my little bit of my background is that um, in one of my jobs that I had for about four or five years, I was a trainer. So I train people. And I'm a CPR trainer. So I get up there and I talk. So I like to get up there and talk and crack jokes and have fun with people. And I train people in their job doing their stuff. So blah, 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 blah. I still do because I'm a supervisor. So I supervise people too. So I use that sort of a DND skill, a DM skill, sort of to help supervise people, like how to relate to people and talk to people and figure out who they are and how they do things. And um, so I'm not afraid to get up in front of people talk. And I'm not afraid to get in, you know, talk to people. And so it helps. And it can help your fear as a DM. You can get up, help, help your fear of getting in front of people and talk because you get in front of your group. You're all your friends. They should be your friends, right? Your D&D group should be your people, your, your family. And, if, and so you shouldn't have any pressure. It should be the people you want to play. So you, if you screw up, you screw up. I tell people all the time, oh, I screwed that up. Let's go back. I screwed something up. Okay. Or I drew, and this doesn't matter. You're having a good time. So that's what it is. So gauge it by having a good time. That's how you win D&D. All right. So in, let's also talk about D&D is that D&D is a game of the imagination. All right, so this is my personal opinion. Some people may not agree with it, but my personal opinion. This is my, you you can take every book, every rule, everything. You don't need anything to play D&D. You really don't. You, you, the only thing you need is your mind. That's that's it. Books, hand handouts, uh, guides, dragon magazines, uh, everything else. Those are just, those are just tools. Okay, they're, they're there to help you out, but you don't need them. The only thing you need is you, your mind, and your friends. Having some dice helps because the randomness thing stuff stuff. But even your, as I'll talk later, I'll tell you, dice don't always make the rules, and dice always don't make the outcome, okay? So really, all you need is your mind, a sense of imagination, and people who are willing to world travel on your world with you. If they're willing to jump on board with you and do it, you could play just sitting at a table and just talking, okay? It's just talking like storytelling. It's what you're doing. You're telling a story. So you don't need all that stuff. It's great. Okay, I'm not going to say that. Well, I'm not going to say that you don't need it. Wizards of the West Coast is like, oh, don't God dang, you better buy our stuff. No, you, this stuff helps. It really does. It helps. And you can have a pre-made adventure if you're not ready or whatever. Or you can have the books to help you with certain rules that you want to work on. Those are fine. The rules are fine. But you don't need the rules because you can make those rules up at your world okay so that's what i'm trying to stress to you is that you really don't need them you don't need the books they come in handy and they set the guidelines sometimes you know that you guys all work on the same playing field but when we boil it down boil down to it it began this game that gary gygax created was basically a game of just imagination it was to go have fun adventuring, dungeon crawling and stuff. You got, he set the rules, everybody was on the same playing field, but 
it's up here. It's up here. Okay, that's all. That's all it is. It's all. It's all up here. That, that's it. So what I'm going to talk to you about these next couple of months, I'm not going to talk about rules. I don't. The rules are the rules. As a DM, you make and change the rules as you see fit. So when I talk to you about um, about these this stuff, okay. You know this this works for first edition. It works for second edition. It works for third edition. Oops. It works for fourth edition. And it works for fifth edition. So that's what I'm trying to get through to you. All the stuff I'm going to discuss today, or not today, but over the next couple weeks. Oops. Yeah. Over the next couple weeks. It will help you in any any RPG. Pathfinder. Chill, any middle or whatever RPG you're playing, it, it, it's going to help you because this is what I've learned. I've played all. I've played a crap load of games of RPGs. D and D's always my my one, but that's it. I've always played a crap load of games. So what do you really need? So what do you need? So as a DM, what do, what do you need? What what's your job? And what do you need? So like I said, your job is to create a world and guide your players through it. You are basically the god of this world. You determine what happens, and you set the plates for them. You're setting the playing field, and you're like, this is what we're doing, and this is my world, and you're going to play in it, and I can do whatever I want. You know, it's like when the DM smiles, it's already too late, right? So you're setting the, the guidelines. So what do you need? So basically what you really only need is you, for D&D, you need the books, okay? So you need... Hang on, you're right with you. Whoop, there you go. So fifth edition, the Dungeon Master Guide, your player's handbook, and your monster manual. Okay, look at this mess. We need these. Okay, that's what you need. These three books. That's basically it. That's, that's what you need. And you know what? I'll tell you what. Once you become a good dungeon master, you don't even really need this. Okay? This is a lot about how to set up adventures, how to run adventures, stuff that you're going to develop on your own. Over time, that you're going to know how to do it. It's like, how do you set up a wilderness adventure? Well, I know how to do that. I know how my wildernesses are. And so I don't need the book to tell me. It has magic items. It has some things in there like that. Exhaustion and magic items and treasures and stuff like that, which is cool, which helps and stuff like that. But a lot of it is, how, is setting up adventures, how to run stuff like that. So there goes the dogs. There goes the dog. As you can see, I don't have a soundproof studio. There's one dog right here. And there's Meg. She's back in her normal spot. Hey, hello, say hi to everybody. Oh, okay, so you need those. You need those books. Okay, so you, you need those books. The next important thing is everybody needs pencil, not a pen. Pencil, because you're going to do some racing. Pencil, this is mechanical. I always have a crap load of it. I got a box like that big full of mechanical pencils. Paper. And you don't need character sheets. One of the videos I'll show you is I'll show you how I used to make a basic character, a first edition character on one piece of paper, and I can make them in like five minutes. Okay? It's like done. A piece of paper. All right? We used to make characters like you just shoot them out. We do make characters. It's so simple. And the way I do things, I'll show you how I change the rules for myself. Okay? So I've changed rules. I run different things. And what's funny I'm sort of going off topic here, but it's sort of funny is that over years when we started playing, we made up rules to help stuff in first edition that weren't what we didn't think was right, now are being used in fifth edition. It's like, oh, wait a minute. We did that first. That, was, that wasn't in any of the other editions. So as people age, as people my age group who grew up with this sort of that, that uh, what was that, uh, world consciousness of, you know, D&D &D that we have this hive mind filtered in there and, and they did a bunch of it. So you need these, you need this. Then you need the all-powerful, all-knowing dice. You need the all-knowing, all-powerful dice. And this is what makes it random. This is what makes up the randomness of the game. So you need the dice. Everybody knows the dice. 
And I'm talking about if you're just starting out too, this is a good video to just learn what you need. Even as a player, you need the dice. So you need the dice, real basic. The 12, the 6, the 10s, or percentile dice, right? 8. Ooh, one more. Oh, crap. What did I get? 80. I got an 80. 4. And then the all-powerful, almighty, all-knowing. Money. Okay, and these can be simple dice. You get some of the old starter kits used to come with dice. You can buy them real cheap now. Some of the places are like buy some of these that I got were like had deals where you buy like five sets for like seven eight bucks off of Amazon. Uh, uh, you can buy like just tons of them. They're just you know sets you can play. As, you don't have to be fancy. You can be as as uh, um, simple, or you can be fancy. These are I like, got a fancy set that I use. Um, these are my fancy set right here, and I showed you this at Christmas time. These are metal. These are all the metal ones. So you can be as fancy as you want or as cheap as you want, right there. Um, you know, you could. I mean, if you get down to it, you can just play with, you know, guessing numbers on a piece of paper or something. I mean, that's what. That's the randomness of it. Okay, so that's really what you need. You need three books. You need, you need motivated players, friends and motivated players, okay? You need a good imagination, you need imagination. You need not to be shy, and you need to be able to, to, to have fun. You need the books, the paper, the pencil, and the dice. And there you go. You can play, okay? Now, they sell the extra stuff. Now, when you get into it and you get a little more, you can get the um, maps, and the figures and the tiles and you can get you can go as, as extensive as you want to be but when it comes down to it it's still the core business the core thing of D&D is up here and getting them to buy into what you're doing okay so that being said that's what you need one of the things to remember too is that it's your world, your game, your rules. So you can change rules as you need to, all right? If a rule doesn't work for you, change it. It's not going to hurt anybody. It doesn't affect anything. Change the rules. You know, don't, don't, or, or, or modify it, all right? To fit what you think is right. If you don't think that's the physics of how it should work, then don't do it. Change it. I've done it all the time. I do it all the time. I'm like, that's not right. You know, it's like, or or it does it doesn't favor, it doesn't help the players. You know, I, there's ways of DM, there's ways of DMing, and, and you're gonna find your style. Some are are are, are are negative to the players. Some DMs feel like they should be just hammering the players that that you should face everything realistically, and this is what happens. And there's player friendly ones. And so I'm sort of player friendly. I, I, I sort of give it to the players to have fun. I, I sort of help them out. I don't make it as rough as you can. You can make it as tough. You can follow every rule I mean, by the word and make that make them do that. I don't. I, I, I sort of give them some leeway. I play loosey-goosey with the rules sometimes because it fits my style of play. It doesn't have to fit your style of play. You could be like, nope, that's what it says. That's what's happening. Or you don't. You could say, no, I don't like that. I don't like that rule. Or it's like, well, you get this many hit die, you get your points back. Nah, you can have some more. You're going to die. I, a magic finger comes down, and you're, you got more hit points. It's, it's up to you. You're the hand of God. That's what my, my kids and my friends always say. Booming voice. Hand of God. Okay? Give me help. <laughs> it's like, booming voice says. Okay? Um... So that's it. So it's your world, your physics. You figure it out, all right? And and don't let anybody tell you differently. You can listen to all these YouTube videos, and that's fine. But when it comes down to it, it's your world, okay? So I'm not going to tell you. You, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. No one's going to tell me how to do it. It comes down to it. You're the one making the rules. You're the one running it. So you can get advice and stuff like that, but don't think that's the way it has to be. You can take a book, fling that son of a bitch, 
and go off what you want to do. All right. Um, so, so you know, I just want to say some sort of certain little things you could do. So, one of the things I would say, like a like a little task that I could give at the end of these things, would be read the rules, read the the DM rules, not just the players' rules, but the DMs, the rules to DMs, and then get familiar with them, and then figure out which ones you don't like and which ones you do. All right, so. Figure out which ones you can change if you if you want to or if you could. Like, you say, well, I could change that one, or I could modify that. Okay, that's a good. Then you start thinking. Okay, well, that doesn't fit, so that does. So take a look at those. Look at the rules and modify. There's a lot of movement going on around these doors here. Um, modify which ones you want. Um, change some. Make up a rule. Okay, I've made up rules. And even now, even now people got so familiar with my style, they're like, oh yeah, this. It's like that's not even a rule. But they're like, yeah, we're gonna do it anyway. So it's like, so do that. Read the rules, get familiar with them, okay, and then change them. So that's it for that's what I'm talking about today. 20 minutes is fine. Some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about, I'll give you real quick, is some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about is um, dealing with players, how I deal with them, okay. Troubled players, good players, getting players, immersing players, um, can experience points, giving experience points, um, uh, dungeons or adventures, um, stuff like do you create, do you do one shots, do you do long hot term stuff like that. Um, uh, your style, dealing with a DM style, how you develop your own style, immersing players into your world. That's one thing that's really I've always tried to do the best. Um, creating your world, we're going to talk about that some, about how to create your world, and um, studying. Different things that can affect D&D from the outside, okay? And so that's it right now I'm thinking of. So you have any comments of things you would like me to talk about? If you think I've ran into issues, comment below, below, uh, comment below. Um, and if you like it, like it. Subscribe. Like I said, I'm gonna do these. Uh, I'll try to do them once every week or every two weeks. And get a video out. I draw it in two two groups. Once once a month. Once every Friday. Um, so, like I said, if you have anything you want me to discuss with you, if you want to talk, you can you can um, probably post in the comments. You can hit me up on Twitter at uh, Reed Deacon, um, and you can um, um, uh, send me up in the comments or whatever, so we can get back and we can talk about things. So, let's do that. So that's the first one of the D&D school, DM school. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check back and we'll talk again. So for now, read the rules. Change them. It's your world. Do what you want to do. All right, brother? Scissors. Because I have females make great DMs. Trust me. I have some women that make great DMs. And men, everybody. You can do it. Anybody can. All right, guys? Peace.